Hi, hello, I hope you're taking care of yourself. If you're new here, my name is Lexi and welcome to the most arbitrarily themed reading vlog the world has ever seen. I really looked outside and I was like, winter, it's winter. What if I read books during the winter and called it a theme? I wasn't planning on doing a reading vlog this month just because I'm working on so many scripted videos, but I started Check and Mate and within 45 pages, I was like, I need to have my reactions to this book on tape. And there's a couple of other books that I feel that way about this month too. It's just like I spontaneously decided to just read all of my most anticipated books in the near future at the same time. I, I can't not vlog it. Like it's not, it wouldn't be natural. So yeah, the imaginary theme for this video is that it's cold outside and I'm reading some books that are going to make me feel emotions to help me heat my house. <laughs> Never once have I promised that anything I do on this channel was going to make sense, but this is going to be a good video, okay? Anyways, obviously the first book I'm reading for this video is Check and Mate. It's Allie Hazelwood's newest book. It's her young adult debut. The premise is that you have this girl. Her name is Mallory. She used to be a chess prodigy her entire time growing up, but she stopped playing for unknown reasons that revolve around her father when she was 14. And so she never got to blossom into being the player that she knows that she could have been. And now it is four years later and she's 18. And Mallory has associated with her dad like issues around chess now. So she like literally has not played at all since she was 14, but her best friend ends up talking her into doing this tournament for charity. And when she goes, her first match, she ends up getting put against the number one ranked chess player in the entire world, who is this 20 year old guy named Nolan. He's been the world champion since he was 14. He has kind of a patchy reputation in terms of being a bad loser. And Mallory takes this man to church in this game. She rocks his ass, which leads to her becoming the new rising star of the chess world, where she will of course run into him again and have more interactions with him, I hope. And maybe his reputation like isn't how he he actually is. Maybe he's different. I don't know. But all of that said, when I heard about this book, whenever it was announced a while ago, I was so excited for it. I love a good rivals to lovers story. It's one of my absolute favorite tropes. I love competitions in books. I love a good tournament arc. All of those things are just huge guilty pleasures for me. And Allie Hazelwood is one of my biggest guilty pleasure romance authors. And let me be clear with you that I don't play chess, okay? I hate losing actually, and I never became good at it at a young age. So the thought of playing online chess and like losing half of my games, it's not for me, but I've known a lot of people who play chess and I have a pretty good working understanding of how it works at a base level. And also I ate up the Queen's Gambit when it released like two or three years ago. Anya Taylor-Joy, I would marry her. I would lay down my life for that woman, okay? That series was such a slay. So that's the extent of my knowledge on chess, okay? Like I'm not going into something like this knowing nothing and I know enough to find stories about it very interesting. But if you put me into a match against your average chess playing eight year old, I would get trounced, okay? Like there'd be no hope for me. Anyways, I'm like 30 pages in. I'm already having such a good time for this. Like this is exactly the kind of cheese and cringy nonsense that is just made for me. So I'm gonna keep reading and I'll report back when I have more to share. Jumping in real quick with a word from the sponsor that has been feeding me for this entire video, which is Factor. Speaking as somebody who has struggled for a long time with eating on a consistent schedule and also just generally with finding the willpower to cook, I was really, really excited when Factor reached out to me. Factor is this fantastic service that prepares and delivers fresh, never frozen meals straight to your door. And I personally have been devouring these over the past week. All of them have been bangers. And this is me in my lovely mother's kitchen preparing one. The best part about Factor is that it feels like the meals are specifically designed for people who are either very busy, very incompetent at cooking, and or very lazy. And as somebody who is all three of those things, having access to a service where I can just whip something out of the fridge and heat it up for two minutes in the microwave and then be done because that is truly it, that's all it needs from you, is just incredible. Factor meals take essentially zero prep, as you can see, like the closest thing to prep that they require is you getting a plate out of your cabinet, which you don't even really have to do. Like you can eat them straight out of the tin, I've done it before. But either way, that's like the only step between you and enjoying an absolute treat of a meal. I am being completely serious when I say that I have loved everything that Factor has sent me. I've even been really impressed with the wellness shots, which are just these little juices that have vitamins and other goodies. They're fresh, they're fun, they make me feel like I'm taking care of myself. So if you're looking to take a massive weight off of your shoulders with cooking every week, you can head on over to factor75.com or click on the link in my description below and use the code newlynova50 to get 50% off your first Factor box, as well as free wellness shots for life. You can get two free wellness shots out of three available flavors for every single box that you get while you're an active Factor subscriber. Strongly recommend. I really feel like they cooked with this one, both literally and figuratively. So thank you to Factor for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to it. This 
book is so good. It is, at least so far, exactly what I wanted it to be. I'm almost halfway through. It reminds me of if you took like the parts of The Queen's Gambit where it's like, look, you know, a woman breaking the gender barrier and like killing the game and tournaments and appending expectations around her. And you just like <laughs> replaced all of the parts of the show that were critically acclaimed, like the addiction subplot and the vaguely unlikable and obsessive nature of the protagonist, all of the things that made for good drama, basically. And you replace them with just the silliest little rom-com that you ever did see. And I know that sounds silly because it is silly. Like this book is so goofy, but it's just, it's so fun. It's so fun. And look, I will always understand people who are like, Ali's books, they're cringe. Like I don't get them. I think that they're too online for me. I think that they're too meta. I totally get that because when I read books like this by other authors, I also get annoyed normally, but there's just something about the way she does it. I don't know, man. It just, it makes me so happy. I can't even describe to you what this book is doing to my spirit right now. I've been in Credence Jail for like the past four days writing the script for that video. And this is so wholesome. It's so cute. And I needed it. I needed it. God, so fun. This woman is so oblivious. She's so stupid. Nolan is obviously obsessed with you. He's literally been obsessed with you since day one. And she's like, I think he hates me. He just probably didn't like losing to a girl. He is in love with you. And meanwhile, this man's on his hands and knees saying shit like, yeah, you know, like I was really falling out of love with chess, you know, until recently. You're the only person I want to play. That wasn't the best game I've ever played. It was something else. And normally something like that would annoy me, but just the things this man says to her as she is completely oblivious, it has me giggling. It has me giggling. I just feel like every page that they have together has at least one line where I'm like, oh, it's just so fun. I love reading romance books that prove to me that I can just enjoy things like this. I need to do other things with my time today. I, I can't just read this book forever, but just know that I want to. This is the face of self-discipline. This is the face of responsibility. This is the face of a girl who just gets things done. I need him. Dude, every time this woman defeats a blatant misogynist in the field of battle, an angel gets its wings. I am living right now. <laughs> no, but they're playing like a variant of tic-tac-toe where if one of them wins, they get to ask a question of the other person. And this man wins and then he goes, do you know how incredible you are? Really? You're wasting a question on this? I'm serious. Do you realize how exceptional you are, Mallory? I've never seen anything like what you do with chess. Never. You are 10 times better than me. I beat you once while playing white and you were probably expecting an easy game. You haven't answered my question. Do you know how fucking good you are? Yes, I know. Does it bother you that I'm that good? No, maybe it should, but he lets that butt dangle mysteriously. Why? You haven't earned a question. <laughs> oh, I'm so into it. When he calls her competent, when he respects her as a competitor. Oh, he's down so bad. And it's just, she's so silly for not seeing it, but I see it. I see it. And whenever he says anything, I'm like giggling because I'm like, you're obsessed with her and I can tell and you've been obsessed with her since day one. And isn't that how it should be? Isn't that exactly what I want for my fictional world chess champion who's about to get dethroned by this random girl who came out of nowhere? Like if he was anything less than obsessed with her, I would desire a refund. I fully acknowledge that I like this book a lot more than I should. I don't know what's in the air. I don't know what's in these pages. Yeah, this is live footage of me just ignoring all of my responsibilities today because I know I should be doing things other than reading this book. I had no intentions of pounding through the the entire thing today. It just, it had to happen. I never had the choice. <clears throat> I look Daphne in the eye. She's always encouraged me, always been honest. No relentless toxic positivity with her. Do you think I can win the challengers? I asked her, trembling a little at the prospect of the answer. Mallory, I think you can win the world championship. <laughs> I am so hyped. This is my power fantasy. Oh, I just love it when men lose. Okay, carrying on. I need him. It's not out of the blue for me. I came to terms with this months ago, Mallory. The first time we played, maybe. I've got you. Nothing bad is going to happen. You can let yourself want this because you already have it. You have me. I finished it. Okay, hello. <laughs> it's the same day and I have done nothing except read this book and now it's over and I feel like my life is empty. In my head, my thoughts, my prefrontal cortex, they're all saying give it four stars, but the vibes, my heart, <laughs> so good. So we'll see where I end up reading it. I'm gonna sit on it for a little while. Things I liked about this book, their relationship, the two main characters, it was just, 
so much fun. Their conversations had such rich banter and there was, again, I said this when I was vlogging, but like the constant subtext of he's obviously so obsessed with her all of the time from day one, but she refuses to see it because she's blissfully ignorant of this fact. Again, like that should annoy me, but instead I just ate it right up. Allie is just so good at writing dynamics like that. She's my girl for real. And I really do think that this is my favorite book in her catalog, which I've liked everything I've read by her, but this one felt the most unique and memorable to me. I mean, not only because she typically writes like a very similar arc of woman trying to break into STEM faces some misogyny, except from that one guy who sees her talent for what it is, and then she ends up doing something really important and impressive. And I mean, like, yeah, that is exactly what happens in this book, but with chess instead. But with chess instead, you know? Just something about it hit in a way that felt unique. And I just love to see women prosper. Like, regardless of realism, I mean, I feel like people who actually play chess could come for this book for being kind of unrealistic. And like, obviously, it's going to be unrealistic for a premise like this book has to work at all. In fact, it was better that it was unrealistic because it's just 10 times more entertaining to see the meteoric rise of a bad bitch into the chess world. I loved it. I for one had a great time and a cheeky tear was even almost shed during the part of the book when Mallory's having conversations with her family. If you know, you know. I also liked those dynamics a lot. I feel like it was a very heartwarming B plot in the background, just cooking. I do feel like it's worth mentioning that this is upper, like upper YA, I would say. Any actual explicit scenes are fade to black, but there's just a lot of talk about sex in this book, both implied and not. And I mean, like, I don't care, obviously, because A, I'm an adult, and B, I do feel like people love morality policing teenagers and deluding themselves into thinking that they are not engaging with shit like this. That's like above what people might think is their pay grade in terms of age and maturity, which can lead to people freaking out for no reason about any representations of sex like this, even when it's like safe, very consensual. And that is just a trend I do not like. It feels very purity culture to me, but it's still worth saying that this read more new adult in terms of vibe, I would say. So it's worth knowing, especially if you are younger and you're thinking about reading this and you wanna make sure it's something that you'll be comfortable with reading. That's why I bring that up. Honestly, it's exactly like one of her adult romances, just with the explicit scenes kind of backspaced, taken out. And with that said, the only thing that I was sad about with this book was that the ending felt kind of rushed. Honestly, I think I just wanted more from it and from the resolution than we got. But I mean, like I've been thinking about it because I've been trying to figure out why I felt that should be the case. And I mean, there are places where the book doesn't have an exceptionally large amount of depth, but I really think the main reason that I felt that way is just because I really enjoyed the book. I did not want it to be over. I did not want this experience to end without providing me with even more of the infinite supply of dopamine that was available to me during my reading process. So yeah, if you fancy yourself a silly goofy story every once in a while as a treat, I think that you'll love this. I mean, I did. Don't get me wrong, it's not life-changing. I've definitely read romances with more character depth and better themes than this book, but genuinely it's hard to think about a time when I've read a book that has been this much fun. And if that's compelling to you, I would check this out. I really liked it. Check and make. Okay, on that note, I'm gonna go back to jail. And by jail, I mean the hole where I've been scripting the Credence video that you're probably going to see before you see this one. I'm not sure if I'm going to have time to start another book today, but if I do, it will be a study in drowning probably before bed. And I'll tell you about it whenever I actually start reading it and exploring it. Okay, I'll see you when I see you. Why hello? For you guys, it's been two seconds. And for me, it's been several weeks. I remember there was a world when I wanted to finish this vlog before the end of 2023. It's now January 8th. So <laughs> we're back, hello. I have in fact finally started this book and I'm about a hundred pages in. But first, some last thoughts on Check and Mate now that I've had an absurd amount of time to let them percolate. I ended up deciding to give it 4.5 stars. I still loved it. I still had like an embarrassingly good time, but I really am mad that we got edged the entire book for that last scene that then ended before we got to actually see what happened, before we got the payoff that we deserved. Like that's kind of vague, but like if you've read it, you know what I'm talking about. But you know what? I still loved it. It was a barrel of fun and I'm not afraid to admit it. But this book, very, very different in tone, obviously. It's A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed, who is the author behind one of my favorite books of 2023, Juniper and Thorn. I absolutely love Ava Reed. If she would have my hand in marriage, I would offer it tomorrow. She is just such a star when it comes to dark fairy tale whimsical vibes. And so far, this book is no different. It's been really, really good. Again, I'm about 100 pages in. This book follows a girl named Effie, who is this young and disillusioned architecture student that ends up entering this competition to redesign the house of her recently deceased favorite author. And this author was this reclusive and enigmatic man named Mirden, whose books were so good and so influential and outstanding that they've essentially been canonized into lore that to varying extents, some people actually believe to be true to life. So yeah, he's a very important dead man inside of this fantasy world. And also his books are about Faye, largely. Effie ends up winning this competition and then she goes out into the middle of nowhere to visit this guy's estate only to find out that the entire project seems to be kind of doomed from the jump. The structural integrity of the property is essentially zero. Like nobody should be designing a house there. It's going to get washed away in the next thunderstorm. That's kind of the vibe. So Effie kind of feels like she's being tricked, but she ends up deciding to stick it out 
anyways and team up with this kid named Preston, who is a literature student at the same academy as her that is investigating and digging into the life and times of Mirden because it seems like he had secrets. There were things afoot in this man's life that the public did not know about. And so yeah, they work together to dig into this creepy man and his creepy family and his creepy estate because he appears to have had some secrets. There seem to be things at work inside of this house. This book has, before every chapter, little epigraphs from books of the world and like newspaper articles and things. Flavor text, if you will, the books inside of the book. And I just want to read you some of the absolute bars that Ava Reed has been pumping out, not even like into the book, but into the epigraphs before the chapters of the book. What is a mermaid, but a woman half drowned? What a selkie, but an unwilling wife? What a tail, but a sea net, snatching up both from the gentle tumult of dark waves? And then uh, we must discuss, then, the relationship between women and water. When men fall into the sea, they drown. When women meet the water, they transform. It becomes vital to ask, is this a metamorphosis or a homecoming? Hello? Whoa! It's so good. I just love their writing. It's this really cool combination of whimsical, but also foreboding and just dripping with atmosphere. It's just my kind of thing, for sure. Like, nobody's doing it quite like Ava Reed. It is also worth noting, if you're thinking of reading this, that their books tend to deal with trauma and violence against women as important thematic elements. And I mean, like, I can't speak for this book yet, obviously in totality, because I'm only 100 pages in, but I find that her execution of those themes is typically very compassionate and holistic, and also true in a way that reminds me more of memoir than fiction, thematically, just in terms of the vibes. I don't know if that makes sense, but it just like, it really hits. Anyways, I'm gonna be reading this today. I'm gonna try to get through as much as I can. I mean, I have like, again, 250 pages or so left, something like that. So very well might be able to finish it, but we'll see how I go. I'll check in with you as I do. Cool. Yep. See you then. Not that you asked, but I stole this blanket from my mom at White Elephant this year. It's been weeks and she's still mad about it, <laughs> but it's so soft. I don't know if you can just tell by vibe how nice this blanket is, but let's just say I do not have regrets. over halfway. This book is scrumptious. The way I am eating this up. I am just so curious. I need to know it's real. I need to know it's not real. It is just also interesting. Also, this man, chef's kiss. This man did like a nice academic boy version of the Cardin thing and just like wrote her name a bunch of times in his notes. He is obsessed with her and you love to see it. I love this book. I love this book. This is a great vlog so far. There was only one bed in my fractured fairy tale. <laughs> Oh, I love this. Okay, hello. I finished this book and I also finished this puzzle. So needless to say, I've had a very productive evening. This was so good. The last third or so in particular, just the way that the mysteries in the story all came together and wrapped up. It was just awesome. It's like the book equivalent of that meme where it's like, was she silent or was she silenced? Except it's actually good. This is probably also a 4.5 for me, a very successful vlog so far. We're like two for two. This book is super gothic in terms of vibes. It is like dripping with the atmosphere and it's slow, I think for the first half or so, kind of because of this, but in a way that I really enjoy I just loved reading about those two crazy kids exploring this decrepit ass old house together. I absolutely loved the main character. She had this particular variety of anxiety and eroticism that I feel like I do, so I felt very seen by the story, and it was just so much fun to read about her journey. This book is still pretty dark, but it's not nearly as twisted as Juniper and Thorn, if you're worried about that. I mean, it is YA, so even though it's still dark in terms of content relative to the genre, it's still very readable. Like, it's not the kind of book that's gonna keep you up at night with nightmares, you know? I also just want to say as we wrap this up, like, I didn't mention this properly during I don't think any of the times I talked about this today but the plot of this book really plays a lot with reality and truth like the core reason why Effie is so into this author Mirden is because she has been hallucinating images of the fairy king which is a character from his book since long before she actually read the book so reading his story is just really comforting to her it makes her impossible experiences feel a lot more grounded in reality hence why she is the number one stand hence why she has this entire book memorized and enters this contest and unpacks his legacy yada 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 etc but the way that this man manifests in this book is you never really know what is real and what is imaginary because Effie also does not really ever know what is real and what is imaginary and it adds to the tension of the central mystery in such a compelling way and again just really makes it all hit at the end like I don't know how else to describe the ending of this book other than saying to you it hit it hit it hit really good okay cool moving on the last book I'm reading for this video this like wintry vibes video as if that book had anything to do with winter but we're just gonna pretend it did is The Winners by Frederick Bachman but this book is something of a marathon it is a tone 
poem. It's like 700 pages of what I can only imagine to be unbelievable pain. This is the third book in the Beartown series. I fucking loved Beartown. I've been meaning to pick this up like for about a month and a half now, and I've just been afraid. There's just something about these books that like brings out this almost primordial misery from within me. And don't get me wrong, like they're uplifting as well, but that almost makes it worse. Like it makes all of the ways that these books are sad hit so much harder to know that there's also like hope and joy to be derived from all of the pain. I don't know. Anyways, again, this vlog is spoiler free, so lucky you, you're just gonna get some vibes. But if you don't know what this series is about, which would surprise me if you watch my channel, really quickly, this series is about this town in Sweden where young people play hockey and everybody else watches young people play hockey and the results of said hockey games have extreme consequences for the town. But the books in this may shock you are not really actually about hockey at all. Every single person in this town, it feels like they all get perspectives, just all of them. And they all have tortured backstories and just love each other so much and have so much going on in their lives and just really complicated relationships with other people inside of this town. And the book is just like, what if we made you feel a profound amount of empathy for like 75 different perspective characters? It's very ambitious, as you might imagine. And this is the last one. This is the last in the series. I've heard that the potential for irreparable psychic peril is very high with this book. Wanted to capture this journey on camera for you guys. Thought it would be fun just so you can see how this goes for me. Yep, just the dedication for this book. Let me read it to you. To you who talk too much and sing too loud and cry too often and love something in life more than you should. She's not ready. I'm not. What is a girl to do when even the dedication hits? I have 700 pages left, so okay, I'll check in again with you whenever I start this. Maybe tomorrow. Nobody knows for sure, but I'll be back. Signing off. I'm not even filming anything today. I just wanted to show this weather to you because like it's so winter. This is the epitome of the vibes of what I kind of wanted this vlog to be when I was trying to invent a reason to read these particular three books together. And let me just share with you a quote from this book that I have not stopped thinking about since I finished it last night. Just as we look outside into this beautiful snowstorm together. This is from the book inside of the book. I will love you to ruination, the fairy king said, brushing a strand of golden hair from my cheek. Yours or mine, I asked. The fairy king did not answer. Bars, bars, this book has so many bars. Tell me you would not read a full version of that. I certainly would. Ask not how long it's been since I recorded A Study in Drowning, but rather how soon it will be that I will find myself in emotional shambles as a result of starting this book now. Let's finally get this done. <laughs> Page 55. I'm not even 10% of the way in. Hello, it's about five o'clock the next day. The sun is kind of setting as I'm filming this and I'm sitting down to finally read a little bit. I'm a little bit over a hundred pages in and so far it's been good. I'm not gonna be talking to you specifically about the plot at any point during this vlog because obviously it's the last book in the series. But one thing I wanna talk about, and maybe this will get better as I continue to go through, but in subtle ways, it feels like the translation of this book is just different than the translation for the first two. And really what I mean where it's most noticeable is that there are just so many comma splices in this book that are clearly stylistic. Like they're clearly a result of whatever the situation and the deal is in Swedish, but it's kind of annoying. It kind of takes me out of it. And I had to go and grab Beartown from my shelf to see if it was translated the same way. And I don't think it is. Like I reread a couple of chapters and I couldn't find any comma slices when in this book, I feel like every single paragraph has at least one. And it's just, I'm getting used to it. I am. Part of it is that I used to be a writing tutor in college. Like I was paid to read the essays of mostly college freshmen and look for things like that. And so it's just so obvious to me, like it really sticks out and I can't turn off the part of my brain that's like, this is just incorrect. Even though I know it's just a quirk, I think in the way that it's being translated. God, this is so annoying. I feel like a gnat, like I'm self-aware about how annoying this thing that I'm saying is, but I tried Googling it a little bit to see if anybody else had had the same problems. And I was too afraid to like really do a deep dive because I don't want to be spoiled, but I didn't see anything. And it is the same translator as his other books. And I just want to know if any of you guys have also had this experience or if I'm just an insufferable nerd who is not remembering that the other books were exactly the same and therefore should be jailed for randomly having a problem with it now. Just let me know. Just asking for a friend. I'm the friend because I don't know what the truth is and it's bothering me. Anyways, in terms of the actual book, I'm still not convinced that this really needed to be a trilogy. Like I'm hoping that this goes somewhere that is different and new and really expands on the world in a substantial way because I feel a little bit that this in the last book 
has just taken advantage of how connected I am to the cast of characters in order to create more books that respectfully maybe didn't need to exist. And I'm saying that as somebody who, unless this really disappoints me, it's probably still going to get four stars because I just really love this man's writing style and the way that he constructs stories. It just kind of feels like extended universe fan fiction or like a really, really long thousand page bonus chapter at the end of Beartown as opposed to its additional own thing. And I, again, I, I don't want to be a hater. Like I am still enjoying this. I do still think this is a good book. It's just the first book is so good that I want it to have this perfect legacy. But we'll see, you know, I still have like 80% of this book to change my mind on this and hopefully things improve. But I just wanted to like lay that out now because it's also kind of how I felt after the second book, but I was really hoping that it would go somewhere new. And so far I'm just still getting the vibe of all of these being like bonus deleted scenes as opposed to really being a story. I am going to keep reading this, but I also want to show you guys the puzzle that I'm working on. I just love doing puzzles and thinking no thoughts and just listening to silly podcasts. It is my passion and this is the puzzle. Wow, look at her, so unfinished. This is what it's supposed to look like. We're gonna get there. I love puzzles. I love doing puzzles instead of the things that I'm supposed to do. No, I don't actually. I would really rather do puzzles when I'm done with the things that I'm supposed to do, but I don't know how to not be the way that I am. So here I am putting together my hot girl mental health New Yorker puzzle instead of doing any of my laundry or the other responsibilities that I have. Why was I allowed to age into being an adult? Who let this happen? Like who cleared that? Who made the decision that I was ready? Because <laughs> they were not correct. Okay, off I go to do some of this puzzle and then read some of my lovely book. Talk to you soon. Also, I feel like my hair kind of popped off today. Just putting that out there. I do the overnight version of the tights slash leggings curls and I'm incompetent. I'm not a professional. I'm just a girl. So sometimes they turn out so bad, but sometimes they kind of pop and today they're kind of popping. So I wanted to highlight that in case I don't film anymore. Okay, now I'm going for real. It's now 9 p.m. <laughs> Okay, carrying on. Onyx can sense the despair in my soul. Yeah? Thanks, buddy. Hello, I'm a little bit over halfway. I'm like 300 pages in and I have some thoughts, but I'm not gonna share them right now because I'm about to go to the salon to get my hair cut for the first time in a few months because I can't keep cutting my own bangs in these conditions. They're starting to look obvious. So I'm gonna go fix that and then read some more and then update you on why I feel like my soul is being pulled in two directions. Kind of similar to how I did last night, but yep, taking you along with me on this adventure of getting my hair cut. Woo, transition. Excuse me, this quote. Above all the other words for love, there ought to be one for this. One that says how many times we've come close to losing each other, but turn back and start again. One for the very smallest things, the inches, when we brush past each other in the kitchen instead of only almost doing it. Something that says, I can't bear it. I can't bear it if you can't bear me. I can't bear it without you. If it's not that, I don't want it. Say what you will about my overall opinion of this book so far, but this man just knows so many things and I love him for it. Ah, like adopt me, adopt me. Just how much do you guys think it would take if a young Midwestern girl starts screaming in a small town, will a man in Stockholm, Sweden be able to hear it? I feel like if anybody could, it would be this guy. Chiming in, hello, I've been reading for the past several hours. I'm on about page 500 and I kind of just want it to be over. It's just so repetitive, like I don't really care past a point about the exact nature of the politics of this region of Sweden. I don't need you to tell me several times about the same racketeering scheme. It's not going to magically make me interested in it. It's important insofar as it's background for the emotional dynamics between the characters and what's happening and the secrets that they're keeping, but I just don't care about it. I don't need to know everything. And also it feels repetitive of book two, which was a lot more focused on the economics of the region. Like there really is nothing new there. It doesn't feel like anything has really changed. The rivalry between Bear Town and Head, the other town, is exactly like that too. I feel like they hate each other exactly as much as they always have. It's just for different reasons now. And so much time is just spent revisiting those things or going back to the other two books and talking about things that we already know happened there. But again, several times in the same book, like you're recapping the recap and I don't fuck with it. Like, where's the value add? You know what I mean? I've had enough slices. God forbid you put Frederick Bachman in the same boat as Jennifer L. Armentrout, but like this man just really needed an editor for this book. Nobody should be allowed by any 
anybody who cares about them to put out 700 page tomes of redundant nonsense. Like if this book was just focused on the events of this book or at the very least just said each thing once, I feel like I would be liking it a lot more. Like it still wouldn't be hitting me quite the same as the original book did, but it would be better. It's kind of crazy to me that this vlog has turned out this way. I was so sure that I would love this, if not as much as the first book, at least as much as I enjoyed the second book. And there are parts that are sad. I mean, like there is that part that had me actually crying last night. Like the prose is still beautiful sometimes. I mean, even today, I feel like I've teared up a couple of times. It hasn't been feral. It hasn't like come out of me like a demon, but the emotion has been there. But truly, I feel like it's just because I love the characters so much, not so much because it's this book that is really compelling to me. And the whole book is building up to this pivotal tragedy that I know is coming. Like they tell you at the very beginning of the book and just randomly also at the end of chapters sometimes, like it'll just be business as usual. Here's what the characters are saying. Here's what they're promising each other. And then the chapter will end with a line that's like, but they would not be around to see this other thing happen. Like it just outright is telling you what's going to happen and it is hitting, but it's just, it's so drawn out and it feels kind of like emotional blackmail. Once again, like an ex, I'm just being reminded of this better book that was 400 pages long and told a more complete and cohesive story. No one is sadder about that than I am, okay? Nobody is more upset that I'm not loving this book right now than me, but I'm 500 pages in and I just like, what's even the point? God, that's harsh, but it's how I'm feeling. Oh, and I know that the ending is going to be really sad. It doesn't matter that I know it's coming. I'm still going to cry just because of how much I love these characters and just how amazing of a storyteller Frederick Bachman is. This man cooks every single time, even when he's writing books that are for the most part completely extraneous. He just gets it. He knows how to make you very upset very quickly. I don't know. Look, I'm saying a lot of things right now that I probably should be saving until after I'm done with this book because who knows, but I just had to get things off of my chest before I go into the 11th hour because I think I'm going to try to finish this tonight or at least get through to the last stretch. I might be on page 500, but there's still like another 200 pages left in this book. So I don't want to speak too soon. But first I'm gonna go make myself some food because I've done this thing today where I've kind of just dissociated until I felt like I was going to pass out because I'd been sitting in one place for too long. It's bad news. I'm not gonna pretend it's not. You really should not be like me. This is just kind of how I get when I'm focused on finishing a long book. I just delude myself into thinking I could do it all in one sitting and then I'll just cook afterwards. And you know, people have said a lot of things about me, but I've never once been complimented on having an excellent sense of time or an excellent sense of scale for that matter. So off I go to reheat some leftovers and I'll check in with you when I have more opinions or more realistically when I start crying because of where this book is inevitably going. <sighs> I mean, the ending hit. I knew it would hit. It was psychic warfare. Like, what did you expect? I love him. I love him so much and I'm so sad. Like, you know it's coming. Frederick tells you. He literally gives you the gift of foreknowledge. An extreme amount of foreknowledge, I would argue. But God. <sighs> I'm gonna talk more about this tomorrow because the concept of having to, like, construct coherent thoughts right now, not something I'm really into, it's a pass for me at this hour in this state. And I don't know if it was worth 700 pages, but the ending, it hit knowing where everybody was going to end up. That hit, knowing who would not end up in those places, it sure did hit. Okay. I'm gonna go to bed. Good night, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Just thought that you should know that the only things that are capable of bringing me joy in this moment are these strawberries and cream white chocolate truffles that my mother got me and the Renee Rapp, Megan Thee Stallion SNL performance. It's all I have right now. Oh God. Oh, hi, funny seeing you here. <laughs> Hello, good morning. It's the next day. It's currently very gray outside. We survived a blizzard earlier this video and now it is raining on the snow. So really the full spectrum of weather we're getting right now. Wow, what an interesting conversation topic. Good one, Lexi. I've spent like all night ruminating on this and thinking about how much love I have for this series and for just the characters and the world that Frederick created. But ultimately I think it's going to be a 3.5 star book for me. And that is not a bad rating at all. Like I always feel compelled to say this when I give a book less than four stars. It was enjoyable. I mean, obviously,
obviously the ending of this book, like the last 50 pages or so, just unhinged a part of my soul from my body. But for all of the reasons I feel like I already discussed during this portion, I just feel like it was too drawn out for what it was. And also one more beef that I have that I've been developing overnight is that I had the impression that this book would have the character that shall not be named as one of the big essential narrative focal points, just given what I knew about it going in and how this book ends and how that ending for that character was foreshadowed like forever. And honestly, I think that out of the three books, we saw by far the least of that character in this book, which, you know, it is what it is. There were other things happening in here, but for me personally, I just look at all of the repetition and the politicking, and then I look at the ending, which still hit. It was still really poignant. It still broke me into two sad little pieces. And I just can't help but imagine a book that had more of that inside of it, instead of just kind of retreading the same grounds. I think I would have liked it more. I think I would have found it to be a more substantial addition to the series. And also with that, the problems I had with the translation around 100 pages into the book, they did get better, or at the very least, I kind of stopped noticing them as much. I was less like pedantically annoyed. So take that as you will. But at the end of the day, if I'm being real and true and honest with you, I feel like this series is a great case study as to why every book does not need to be a series. It does not need to be a trilogy because this is still a five-star book, like six stars, 10 stars. I loved it. It was my second favorite book that I read last year, but it's just not a five-star series. So even though I would recommend this book to absolutely anybody who has a working heart and at least four or five brain cells that they can pound together for the 400 pages that this book takes, I think that the other two will only hit if you're already a really big fan of the original book. I mean, that's why I still like them despite the fact that I found them very repetitive. I still had a good time. I'm still glad that I read them and I'm honestly hurt at a, on a deep personal level by the way that the series wrapped up, which was what I was looking for, if I'm being honest with you. So for me, I think that they were valuable, but I wouldn't recommend them unilaterally to everybody. One thing I will say is that if you do plan on reading the entire series, I would recommend really spacing them out because there's so much recap in books two and three. I think that'll bother you a lot less if you're reading them far enough apart. But yeah, I mean, I like the series. I absolutely love this book. I would die for it, but I just wanted a little bit more, I think, especially from this one. Oh, well, anyways, this winner, <laughs> this winner reading vlog, that was my arbitrary reason to call you here today. Overall, I would call this a success. I filmed this over the course of like two months. This video took an embarrassingly long time for what it was, but we found two like absolute bangers in my opinion for what they were. And then I finished out a world and a set of characters that I think I will hold very near and dear to my heart for as long as I walk on this planet. So I'm very, very happy with this overall. I don't know where my first five star book of the year is going to come from. That's been absent at least so far. It's almost the end of January. Nobody knows when she's going to appear, but we're going to keep fighting. We're going to find her eventually. Okay. As always, if you like this video, please drop me an actual like. It'd be really cool of you to do that. And if you liked me, you should stick around and subscribe and join our little community together here. We do a really wide variety of fun things together on this channel, but that is really it. I will see you very soon with a bi-monthly wrap up. And until that point, it's been real. I love you. I don't have anything else to say. Bye.